Hello, y'all. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, ladies and gents. I'm back. Hey. Hey. I know it's been a minute, but I'm back. And I'm trying to be more consistent with my YouTube this year. I'm excited. So, but as you can tell from the title of this video, what I'm about to be talking about. But y'all don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. I'm telling you, I'm gonna keep them rolling and rolling and rolling. It's something I've been planning on doing this year. If y'all hear any noise, y'all, it's my cat. They running around, chasing after each other, being bad as I don't know what. Anywho, I bow to myself and I promise myself I've been planning this for a minute to come back and return to YouTube and your girl is so, um, I'm doing a story time today, as you can tell by the title, how I moved away from home, okay? And my, I'm just going to be talking about my experience, how I got to where I am now. I don't, I'm trying to make it quick, but let's get into it. Okay, so when I moved away from home, I was about 23, 23 or 24. I can't remember that. I was between those two ages. I, I'm thinking maybe like 24. And my first time moving away from home, I was living, I was moving from North Carolina to Philadelphia. And let me tell you, Philadelphia was not a great experience. And it really taught me to have tough skin. Let me tell you. Because those people in Philly are a little bit more, they straight to the point. Here in North Carolina, it's Southern thing. We're more nice. We speak, we greet, stuff like that. And another thing, when I moved away to Philly, everybody kept saying, oh, I like your accent. I like your accent. I'm like, what accent are you talking about? But after living in Philly for like nine months, it was either six or nine months, one of those. After living there and I went back home and I was like, oh yeah, we country. And now I, I now I can hear what they, I can hear what they're talking about. You know what I mean? I went back home, I see my mom. I was like, dang, we are some little country bumpkins. Like we are country. We sure will, but anywho, when I first moved to Philadelphia, let me tell you, like it was an adjustment. Um if you're a flight attendant, you already know what a crash pad is, and that's what I was saying in. A crash pad, I got a crash pad. I didn't want to move there. Um, so I was just commuting from Philly to Greenville, North Carolina. Philly to Greenville, North Carolina. And it was a double commute, because I would have to fly from Philly to Charlotte, Charlotte to Greenville. And sometimes I couldn't even make it on the flight. And I tried my hardest to hold on to my apartment. I tried, like I, I couldn't, but, I couldn't do it. Like I had to eventually, I think my cousin had told me one time, I was like, well, you don't live in anymore. You just gonna have to face your living grief. I was like, oh no. Like it was hard for me to let it go. I moved to Philly eventually, but in between of me moving there and you know, renting out a room with a roommate, I was living in a crash pad. And the crash pad is for crew members that work at the airport, like pilots, flight attendants, all different airlines, and you just, and they give you like a room with different people in it, with the bed, and you rent out the space for a month. I think like every month. With me, I was paying like, I think 250 a month. Yeah, I think I was paying like 250 a month for my crash pad, and I was in a room with three guys. And I, mind you, I wasn't even there like that. I was only there for the nights that I wasn't working, but I was on duty. Or on call so I was staying with them I was staying in a room with three guys they were all gay or whatnot so on that like that took the light I came in I was just fed up because like for one it's late and we get in at different times we all got different work schedules we do the same job in reality but just for different airplanes different companies and stuff like that so I was in the room with them. it was one particular night I came in and this dude had a whole attitude with me. Like, like I said, we all get in at different times. So if, if he had did that, I wouldn't act the way he did. He just had a whole attitude. Like, are you almost done? Like, bitching at me. That was the last straw. And I'll never forget this day because it happened the day before my birthday. Okay? This was on the 4th of July, 2019. I had like $70 in my account. I was just trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. 
So I decided to spend $10 on an Uber to take me to a hotel, use $40 to pay for a hotel room that night. What, and you can do the math and tell you how much I'm left with. And at that point, I felt like quitting my job. I really did. I'm glad I didn't, but I really wanted to. Like I was like, but I didn't. I'm glad I didn't because I love where I am now. But it was a hard thing to do, let me tell you. So I went to the hotel that night. I, I packed up all my stuff on that place, covers, body. I grabbed everything and I left and I ain't never been back to that house. That's one thing you realize too, is what you can deal with and what you like. Because like, I didn't know this job was a whole lifestyle change. I didn't know, I thought it was gonna be a job, but no, this job is a lifestyle. Like it really is. And that's one thing I didn't know before I started, but now I know. And um, if you can't handle that, then the job is not for you. And I almost couldn't handle it because I did. I was kind of stuck. I was in between a rock and a hard place. Like, yeah, I love my job, but like when you start out, they don't pay you that much, and you have to fend for yourself. So eventually, I so that day, that night, I made it to the hotel. The next day, I left and went home. It's my birthday, and um, I don't even remember what I did for my birthday that year. Um, but it wasn't that memorable because I don't remember. But I remember that night before I was struggling and I was just so happy to be home the next day. That was like the best birthday that I was able to get home and not have to deal with that or not think about it. I had like a day or two off. But before I got based in Charlotte, I ended up posting, a, I ended up posting an ad on uh, Facebook or somebody, I don't know, somebody knew somebody and I got their information and I met this lady and she let me stay with her. Um, in Philly, and I had my own room, my own bathroom. That's what I love because sharing a room with somebody, sharing a bathroom, like I just couldn't do it. Like I, you talking to a girl, you talking about a girl that's been living on her own for a minute now, like going to have a roommate. And it was just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, especially there. Um, so fast forward, after living with her for like six months, um, I got based in Charlotte, North Carolina. So when I got based in Charlotte, I knew I wanted to move here immediately because I've been wanting to live here majority of my life. So since high school, really, <laughs> I've been trying to get here. I would have to say, once I got based here, everything started moving a little bit smoother, okay? So, but when I first moved here, I did get a hotel crash pad. So. The hotel crash bag was so much better than the house crash bag in Philly. Let me tell you why. Because people cleaned up. It was all females. And like, yeah, we had fun. Like, it was lit. We had fun. Like, we got drunk some nights. We cook. We eat. Or sometimes I have the crash pad to myself. So I'm talking about like all this space to myself. I loved it. And then I was sharing a room with some of the people I graduated with. Um, and flight attendant training. So it was like even more fun. It was so fun. I would never forget that experience. I really won't like, I, just looking back on it, I can't believe I did all that and went through all that. That hotel crash pad ended up closing down. So after that, I was just staying in the hotel and just paying when I was working here in Charlotte. And I was like, okay, when I'm gonna start, when I'm gonna move here? Cause I already know I want to move here, which is a matter of money and time. So I moved here February, either March, one of those. But um, I was staying in a hotel. I had probably like um, $600, $700 in my name. <laughs> and I had one out, cause mind you that night before I was staying in a hotel room. So that night, so the next day, I had went to meet with a lady and I got me an apartment literally that next day. And mind you, I only had $700 in my name. I paid that $450 deposit for my apartment. Nice, nice apartment. I, I love that apartment. And I moved in that night and I didn't know how I was gonna pay the bills or nothing like that. Like, I didn't know I was gonna do it, but I did it. I ain't never missed, I never got behind my rent. I knew it was gonna be a sacrifice. I knew this something I wanna do. And one thing about it, if you wanna do something, you'll do it. Like, and you'll find a way to make things happen. So with me, I found a way to make things shape. 
Like on my off days, I'll do Uber to make up this high ass rent. <laughs> I was I was gonna do what I had to do. So I moved there that that next day. Um, after living in a hotel that night, like I was living in a hotel probably like a month after the hotel crash pad closed, and then I went out on my off day and I went looking for apartments and I found one that day. I went to the lady, paid the money, signed the lease, all that. She gave me the key that same day. I was so freaking happy because it felt like a weight was just off my shoulder. Like, mind you, I don't have, I have no family here. I have no friends here. So I was like, okay, I got a key in the apartment. That's it, in my luggage. <laughs> and that's all I had. I went to Walmart that night. I got an air mattress. I got a comforter and a pillow. I was for a couple weeks, just an air mattress. Comforter that I bought and my pillow, one pillow that I bought. I didn't have that much money. I told y'all how much I started with, how much I paid her, so you can just do the math. Or you know, I got some food to eat. Like some food that you don't have in the microwave, like sandwich meat and stuff like that. Cause I have no microwave, nothing. I had lights, I had a shower, I bought stuff to take a bath with. Well, actually, I ain't had to buy stuff to take a bath with because I keep that stuff in my luggage. Like I said, I have my luggage with me, the air mattress, my phone, <laughs> my phone charger, stuff like that, my laptop, so I can have something to watch. That's all I had in my uh, room until I had the next day off to where I could drive home and pick up some stuff. So fast forward, I drove home, had no help. It was hard, let me tell you, I feel like giving up. Like it was easy to just go back home and work a job there and be stuck there. I didn't want to be stuck there. Like. You know what I mean? Thank you for my grandma. She let me keep stuff on her barn. I grabbed my TV. I grabbed my DVD player. Cause my you, I ain't had no internet, no nothing yet. I just moved in it. Like, I was gonna get that eventually. And I did get that eventually. I went home, grabbed my stuff that could fit in my car. Like, cause I didn't have no help really. So I just grabbed like my microwave from my old apartment. I gave away my wash and dryer from my old apartment. Plus, we had like a laundry, laundry facility out there in the neighborhood. So, that's what I used to wash. And my drop that's what I grabbed. Microwave, pots and pans, um, my my clothes, my comforter sets from my old apartment. Like, Cause I had all that stuff still. It was just packed away till I figured out what I was gonna do with my life. <laughs> So I decided to move, like, and take that huge step of moving. I packed that stuff up, drove it back. I didn't grab everything on the first time. Like, on my off days, I go back, drive more stuff. And then, mind you, I moved in the middle of a pandemic, 2020. It was very, very tough. Because <sighs> that, and then moving and doing the long, it was just like a lot. It was a lot. But thankfully, I didn't get COVID in 2020. I did get COVID last year, though. I got COVID in 2022. I didn't get it 2020 or 2021. And then I say I was traveling. I was traveling. I'm a flight attendant. So, hey, I don't know. I didn't get it. <laughs> God is on my side, I guess. <laughs> so, like a lot of stuff that I couldn't take with me. Like, this is it's so far away. It's not super, super far away, but it's far away for me because I do. I was doing it alone. And I'm going about to drive my U-Haul truck from all the way to, from Greenville. To Charlotte, I just wasn't about to do it. Child, I wasn't about to do that. So I just started everything fresh. I ended up getting a couch, furniture, all that. Let me tell you, it was a struggle. If you are thinking about moving away, let me tell you this. It's not gonna be easy, but it's, it's gonna be worth it for sure. And you gotta stay focused on what your goal is and where you wanna be. And you'll get there. Like. That was me, like, I didn't have a lot of friends influence me to change my decision. Some people be thinking just because they can't do it, that you can't. And they try to put that negative energy on you just because they can't do it. Just because they can't do it doesn't mean that you can't do it. You could be the first, first person in your family to do it, okay? I'm just saying, that's why I kept a lot of stuff to myself. Yes, it was a struggle on top of all of that. Still having to travel out of town and work and then come back. And it was it was hard, but I eventually got it together. It was days I felt sad and bored. Like, cause I'm in this empty house by myself. No family or friends down the street or an hour away that I can even drive or talk to. Like. 
I mean, I could talk to them on the phone, but it was definitely hard. When I tell y'all, I was calling my mama every day. Mom, what you doing? I ain't doing that. Just, just conversating because you need that energy. You need that. You know what I mean? When you have those thoughts or you feeling sad and depressed and stuff. Yeah, that really helped me get through. And not having no help, it just made me, you know, be more appreciative on all that I have accomplished. Like, just looking back on it, like, yeah, I did that. And I did it all by myself. That's a huge, huge deal for me. Think about it. When you work hard for something yourself or somebody just giving it to you, you're going to appreciate and value that thing way more. That's just facts. You the one that work hard for that. You know what I mean? So one thing nobody can do is take away the hard work that I did. So, yeah. So, that's pretty much my experience from moving away from home. If you want to do something and you want to accomplish something, you got to work hard for it. You're going to have some bad days. You're going to have some good days. I have learned so much from this experience though. Like moving away, you learn a lot. You learn to have tough skin. You learn that the real world is me. <laughs> it's not easy. The real world is not nice. They don't care about you. Nobody's ever gonna care about you, ever. Of course you have your loved ones that care about you, but in the world, the world as a whole, they don't care about you. They will eat you up and spit you out. For real, like, nothing is given to you. You gotta work hard for it. Where you wanna be at, you gotta work hard for it. Where you wanna go, work hard for it. Work at it. It's not gonna come overnight, but it will come and you will be straight. You will be good. My final words to you is to keep going. Don't give up. Stay focused on your goal and what you wanna do. Don't let nobody try to tell you you can't do something because they couldn't do it or they never seen nobody in their family or never seen or knew anybody that did something in particular. You can do it. Uh, that's just a little part of things I've been through from moving away from home. That's just a little piece of the pie because I'm not trying to make this video super, super long. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video and i'm not talking about two three months from now i will see y'all in the next video very soon thanks for watching Mwah.